Hi everyone and welcome to my presentation. Today I will be talking about healthcare robots. I chose this topic because I think that it is something that concerns all of us as our population is getting older and older and we must come up with new ways of taking care of the elderly people. To give my introducing words a bigger significance, I would like to briefly show you some numbers from the Bundesamt für Statistik for the Swiss population, similar to what you have seen last week. So here in blue, you can see the Swiss population from the year 2013 compared to a prediction for the year 2045 in red. We can see that there is not a big difference for the people aged 50 and younger, but this area here clearly shows that there will be much more old people in the future. And of course, not only in Switzerland, the population is getting older, but also in many other parts of the world. And this shows again how important it is to rethink or to improve our health system. The problem for the healthcare system is that there are not enough people to take care of all these elderly people. And this is where healthcare robots can contribute. I would now like to give you an overview of different types of healthcare robots. And I will show you some examples talk about their tasks and look at some ethical aspects. And the scenario I described before is already well known in Japan as they have one of the oldest populations of the world. Therefore, most of the examples I'm showing you are used in homes for the aged in Japan already. And to give you a better idea of how it all works, I would like to show you a short video. And I hope it works. In Japan, robots seem to be everywhere. Some are used to inform. Who is the president of the United States? The answer is Donald Trump. Others to entertain. They can even be found in the field of nursing care, specifically for the elderly like the ones at the Shintomi Nursing Home in Tokyo. When I first pet these robots, they would move like real living animals, so I thought they were so cute. These robots are not here by chance. The government funds their development for elderly care to help fill a projected shortfall of specialized workers by the year 2025. They are also used to help people with rehabilitation. Understanding the way biped robots walk means understanding the way human bipeds walk and the therapeutic applications that we can draw from that. Japan faces a serious labor shortage as the population ages. People aged 65 or older already make up more than one quarter of the population. And while there are some doubts about how user-friendly robots can actually be, for the elderly at the Shintomi nursing home, they are like family. Regan Levine's TRT World. Okay, so you have seen some different types of robots now. And I would like to start with the human-like robot. One example is Peppa, which most of you have probably seen somewhere before either in the news or in TV advertisements. And they are, for example, used to do gymnastic with the residents of all people's homes, but they're also used to entertain the people and to talk to them. And many residents even feel like they have a special bond with the robot. I think that it is good for the mental health of all people because they have to watch the robot and then repeat what it did. And it is also good for the body because they have to move. And it can be difficult to motivate all people. And when they have a robot in front of them, it might feel a bit more like a game or a challenge and they're more willing to participate. On the other hand, it is impersonal. 
A human therapist can look at the participants and correct them when they did something wrong. And I'm not sure if the robot can do that as well. Or maybe it can do it, but it will never be able to correct the person the same way a human therapist could do so. And as I've said before, some people feel like they have a special connection with the robot. And I think that this can be critical because you should never forget that at the end of the day, a robot is still a robot and not a human. Nevertheless, robots can be good listeners. And as in the future, there won't be enough caretakers. It can be good that the old people can talk to a robot when they feel like they have something to say. An approach for the future might be that every resident can talk to a caretaker once or twice a week and the rest of the time they can talk to a robot and of course they can always talk to each other. The next category are animal-like robots such as the Ibo dog and the Poro seal and the Ibo dog is similar to a real dog, but it has many benefits. It doesn't have a fur, so it never smells bad and it doesn't have to be washed, which can be hard for all people to still do. And all people might be forgetful and the dog does not have to be fed and therefore cannot die. The Paro seal is very fluffy and it is shown that the patients get relaxed and the stress is taken away from them when they can pet the seal. There are also robots to help the nurses and caretakers to carry people. They lift the people in and out of bed or wheelchairs and they can carry them to the bath, etc. These robots are robots which I personally think are very promising because they can replace caretakers and nurses in tasks which are probably difficult for them to do. And as they in the future don't have the capacity to do everything, this would be a good solution. But there is also a negative side, of course. What if the robot is defective? Will the person being carried fall on the ground and get hurt? And can the caretaker interact if there is still a caretaker around? And when you think about it, would you like to be carried by a robot? Or would you even let yourself a, a robot carry yourself? And healthcare robots are not just for older people. They can also be used for rehabilitation. But as there is not enough time to talk about all the robots, I will not go deeper into that. And before I talk about the stakeholders, I searched the internet for information to prepare this talk. And I found a study evaluating whether there is a difference in acceptance of robots in healthcare and also of robots in general between Japanese people and European people. And I thought that this is very interesting because Japanese people are said to have already integrated healthcare robots to their health system. The study is named Cultural Differences in Perception and Attitude Towards Robots. And it is by Kerstin Sophie Haring, Serin Mushno, Fuminori Ono and Katsumi Watanabe and it was published in the year 2014. The paper looked at the following five hypotheses. First, Japanese have a higher exposure to robots than European cultures. Second, Japanese have a more positive assumption about robots than European. Third, Japanese have a more positive attitude towards robots than European. Fourth, Japanese have less fear concerning robots, and last but not least, Japanese prefer a more human-like robots than European. And hypothesis one turned out to be true. Japanese are more exposed to robots, and that's through TV, movies, and especially through their manga comics. 
but Europe, Europeans are more likely to have already had personal contact with a robot. Hypothesis two and three are not true. Japanese and Europeans have a similar attitude towards robots. And it could also not be confirmed that Japanese have less fear concerning robots than Europeans do. But it could be verified that Japanese prefer more human-like robots than Europeans do. So in summary, this means that Japanese people aren't as accepting towards healthcare robots as I had thought they were. This can also be seen in the following statement. Japan is stereotypically be said, said to be a robot nation. And in the paper, they said, this stereotype seems to be fed by the famous developments like the Sony Aibo robot dog and other robots, which are frequently mentioned in the news worldwide. But these seem to be technical outstanding innovations and the Japanese don't feel like these robots will be entering their daily life. And more directly for the healthcare robots, there is a second statement, which you can see on the right. And it says that Japanese might see the help for older and handicapped people as a personal and not a societal task, and they are willing to be supported by a robot, whereas Europeans rather see the overall welfare for society but wouldn't like to let a robot take care of them. And it is a bit a difficult statement to draw a con conclusion from now because the second citation on one hand says that European people care about the welfare of the society, which could implicate that they are willing to integrate robots in the healthcare system in the future when there are not enough caretakers. But on the other hand, it says that they are less willing to let a robot interfere on personal level. And this is a bit controversial, but it is a difficult discussion and it is not easy to predict the future. Therefore, I would now like to show you a figure where the expectations towards robots can be seen. And it is also for the, from the paper. And I will come back to the question of robot usage in Europe when I talk about critical and challenging aspects. So here is the picture. And in red are the bars showing the expectations of Japanese people. And the blue bars show the expectations of European people. And I would like to point out the take care when I am old we can see that only about 50% of the Japanese people expect to be taken care of by robots when they are old. And this is more than the 30% of European people, but I still expected it to be much higher. But that has probably something to do with the picture the news gave me about Japan. And then there's two other points, which are be my sport partner and keep me company. And as you can see, the expectations for both are between 20 and 40%, which is also pretty low, but these are tasks the robots are already used for in Japanese care homes for the elderly. And now for the stakeholders, we have patients, which include old people, injured people, or kids. We have caregivers, nurses, physiotherapists, medical engineering industry and robotics industry, hospitals, care centers, and rehab centers, and the government. So how do these different stakeholders feel about healthcare robots? We also talked about this a bit last week in a discussion that maybe all people now are skeptical or more skeptical towards robots, but children nowadays grow up with technology and smartphones. And so they build up confidence towards robots earlier and won't be that skeptical against being treated by robots because they are already used to live like that. 
then for the caretakers, I heard that therapists and nurses don't really appreciate these robots because they fear that they will be replaced completely. But the goal should not be to, to replace the nurses and therapists, but to support them. Like for example, the bear robot I showed you before, which helps the nurse to lift a patient in his bed. Then the medical engineering industry and the robotics industry, they produce these robots and they earn money with producing these robots. The hospitals and care centers buy these robots and they have to think of ways to integrate them and which tasks the robots could do. And the robots are at the moment very expensive, so there are only few care centers who have these robots. And then there's the government, which is responsible for the health care system. So in the future, when there are not uh, too many old people, it is their task to think of ways to take care of everyone. For the critical and challenging aspects, what is actually most important is to keep a good balance between the usage of robots and contact to humans. And now to come back to the question about robot usage in Europe, when looking at those situations, we should always keep in mind that there probably won't be many alternatives in the future. It is difficult for us now to imagine to be taken care of by a robot, but a question should be asked. Would you rather be left alone and not taken care of by anyone because it is certain that there will be more old people than caretakers? Or would you rather be taken care of by a robot? Which of the boxes would you choose? And with that, I would like to end my speech. Thank you very much for your attention and here you can see the sources.